like a lot of preachers, I feel like I'm a stand-up comedian. <laughs> well, there's proof I'm not. <laughs> Nobody laugh. Uh, all right, we're going to go ahead and receive this morning's offering. Um, Brother Jamie, if you will track down some plates. Hey, man, I'd say use your pockets, but I don't know if we'll ever get it back. And uh, so, Brother Ken, if you would come on. Brother Jamie's getting the place we'll receive this morning's offering. Remember now, it's the 31st. And uh, if you want this to go on your record, it needs to be in today. So if you've been waiting to contribute $100,000 to the church this year, this is your last opportunity. Amen. And I just want to bring that to your attention uh, in case you thought you had another day. All right. All right, Brother Jamie, pray for us, please, sir. Our Heavenly Father, Lord God, we're so very thankful, Lord God, to be able to be in your house, Lord God. For the last day of the year, what a better way to end it, Lord God, than to be in your house, worshiping you with your people, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for that privilege. Lord, thank you for the singing, Lord God, that you've heard already, Lord. I pray that it's been a blessing that's lifted you up. Lord God, and I pray, Lord God, that you bless the remainder of this service. Lord, touch the kids as they come in just a little bit and perform their play, Lord God. I pray that you use them, Lord God, to help our hearts. Lord God, I pray for that one here today that's lost. Lord God, no doubt in the crowd this size, somebody in this room, Lord, has never repented of their sins and trusted you as their Savior. Lord, I pray that today would be the good day of salvation yes, in Lord their Lord. lives. Lord God, and I pray, Lord God, for our pastor as he comes in for just a little while to give us the last message, Lord, that we're going to hear this year. Lord God, I pray that, Lord God, it will speak to us. Lord God, each and every one of us, we're dealing with different circumstances in our life. We're in different places in our life, Lord. But you're still God of our lives. You're still able to do anything and everything for us. Lord yes, God. And I pray, you. Lord God, that you just work in this service. And above all, Lord God, I pray that you get all the honor and the glory for it. Lord, I pray also you take this offering and multiply it for the burdens of thy kingdom. For it's in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. be seated and I hope you enjoy his kids and it'll be a great blessing to you. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea and they went out into the wilderness of Shur and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water and they came to Marah. They could not drink it because it was bitter and the people murmured against Moses saying, What shall we drink? Why did you bring us out of Egypt just to kill us all and our children and our cattle with thirst? Lord, please help us. We are thirsty. And the Lord 
And the Lord showed him a tree which when he had cast it in the waters were made sweet. If you will listen to my voice and trust me and obey my commandments, I will take care of you. Psalm 37, 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. took their journey from Elam and all, all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of sin. On the 15th day of the second month after God delivered them out of Egypt, they began, began to murmur against Moses and Aaron. We were just fine in Egypt. We had food and we were full. Why don't you bring us out here to just Kill us all with hunger. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. <laughs> it is manna. Manna. This is a bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. Man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth of the mouth of the Lord down man live. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and first, their souls fainted in them. Psalms, Psalms 107, 6. And, 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 and they, they cried unto the Lord in their troubles, and he delivered them. them. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. And the Lord came to Moses and said, I will come to thee in a thick cloud so the people can hear me and believe in me forever. Be ready on the, the third day. Only I can go on the top of the mountain. And God, and God spake all of these words saying, Thou shalt not have none other God before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor thy father and mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. Now, the, now these are the commandments, that, the statutes and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you. Write them on the posts of thy house and thy gates, and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to bruise thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou would keep his commandments. <coughs> For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. 
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. <coughs> God is good all the time. I thought for a moment, Brother Ben, being Miss Dusty's husband, and I thought those were McDonald's cheeseburgers coming over the curtain. <laughs> I, 
I'm glad I realized they weren't. I just about jumped in Jamie's lap. He caught one. And uh, I'm glad. Glad I figured out that was not the case. Hey, Amen. I tell you what I got on my heart. I want uh, Mandy and Ashley and Jeb to sing one song that they practiced last night. I understand this morning. And uh, tremendous, tremendous truth in this song. Uh, the Lord is, he's been faithful. And I'll say more about that. And uh, I'm looking forward to being faithful in the coming year. So I want you to pray as they sing. I want to use them. And uh, then we'll get into the message. Before we sing, I just want to um, say I love the Lord and I thank Him for saving me. And I wanted to personally thank everyone that helped with Ashlyn's thing yesterday and made it the success that it was. And um, most of all, thank you for your prayers during this time. This song talks about that God's never made a promise He will keep. And he just made so many promises over and over. And he's always been faithful. And I just thank him for it. And um, there's a part on this song that I always mess up. So if I mess it up, don't listen to me. Just listen to the words of the song. So, But um, I just want to thank you all for helping out yesterday. And thank you for your love and everything that y'all do for us. Set a sure
promise that He does not keep. There's never been a moment He's not all I need. He's never made a promise that He does not Amen. I believe that could be the testimony of everybody here. The Lord's never forsaken us, never left us. Miss Effie? Amen, Miss Effie. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. What a blessing. Thank the Lord for His goodness. Appreciate that good song. Stirred my heart. I like having my heart stirred. Amen. I had a family quit coming. It's been goodness years ago had a family quit coming to church this is the reason they gave they said well every time we come to church we end up crying <laughs> and uh, they said we just we don't want to go to church where we cry all the time <clears throat> well the good news is they found a church where they never cry the bad news is they found a church where they never cry Amen. They got exactly what they wanted. And uh, I'm glad we can cry. I'm glad we can laugh. I'm glad we can, we can joke. We can have a good time. I'm glad uh, sometimes we cry when nothing's wrong, but everything's right. I remember Tinsley especially. She's the one I remember doing this the most. I'm sure all of my kids have. But Tinsley used to, she'd get tore up about something, and I'd go over there checking on her, make sure she's okay, and she'd say, oh yeah, Daddy, this is just a happy cry. Amen. And uh, I'm glad that we can have a happy cry once in a while, and I, I praise the Lord for it. Psalms 37 is where we'll take our text this morning. Psalms 37, and uh, want to bring message. Now rest in this consolation. Uh, I understand we've, we've had play, and uh, the song service has been a little longer than normal, and I understand we have a business meeting following the service, and uh, I know that uh, I'm, I'm being time conscious is all I want to let you know. I'm being time conscious, and uh, but we are just having the one service today. I've got a message on my heart. I believe the Lord wants me to preach, and uh, I want to mind the Lord in doing so. So you pray and hear gladly, and as you all know, when... When you get behind me and raise your hand, nod your head, and say amen and praise the Lord, I preach faster because I don't feel I'm having to work as hard. Now, if you don't do any of that, I've got to work harder and it takes longer. And uh, so really, the length of my message is entirely up to you this morning. Psalms 37, stand with me. We'll begin reading in verse number 23. I believe it'd be a good place to start. And uh, we'll read verse 23 down through the remainder of the chapter. The Bible said, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked should be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord he, and keep his way. He shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, from uh, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away. And lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him but he could not be found. Now, verse 37 is Mandy's life verse. Mark the perfect man. <laughs> Some of you get that, amen. <laughs> For the end of that man is peace. There is a story behind that, by the way. I'll tell you some other time. 
Verse 38, but the transgressors shall be destroyed together and the end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. The Lord shall help him deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Heavenly Father, I pray now that you'd help us. I thank you, Lord, for the joy I feel in my soul. I've enjoyed the song service. The kids did such a great job. Thank you, Lord, uh, for the good de depiction of, of the coming of the law. Lord, not for us to be made just by but to reveal our sin so it could become our schoolmaster and lead us to you to show us that we would never live up to the holiness of God. Lord, to magnify Christ in the fact that Christ is the only one, the spotless Savior who has not come to do away with the law, but to fulfill the law. And through him, we are saved. And I thank you, Lord, for all of the good reminders this morning. Thank you for the songs. And Lord, I ask you that you'd help us now. Lord, you know what's on my heart. Pray, Lord, that you would please give liberty and power to preach. And Lord, for this, we will be very thankful and grateful. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you. You can be seated. As we've read these verses, I want to deal uh, with a thought in just a moment. I, I thought about this. You know, this is the last um, uh, Sunday of the year, the last day of the year. Many people tonight will be having watch night service. And we have in years past uh, preached many watch night services and our choir has sung. And I thought about this. You know, the teen years in a century are kind of hard on the catchy titles. Everybody likes to have a catchy title for the New Year's message, and I got to thinking about that. And these teen years are kind of hard because by the time you get to 17 and 18, you've already used so many different words because they've all got to rhyme with teen. And uh, I thought about don't be mean in 2013, don't get, or it's time to get lean in 2014, and then let Christ be seen in 2015, let's go green in 2016. But by the time you get to 17 and 18, man alive, you got to start getting creative about things. So here's, here's the best I've got. We didn't go to heaven in 2010 plus 7. Like that. But it's not too late to go in 2010 plus 8. <laughs> but you may be out of time for 2010 plus 9. Amen. And uh, I thought, you know, if you've got to labor that hard to come up with a catchy title, I'm just going to throw out the catchy title. There is no catchy title for this morning's message. I want to preach on this subject. What have we learned from 2017? I believe every year, every day, perhaps uh, every hour in our lives, God allows us to go through something that we learn from. And I think if we will pay attention and be careful uh, to take note of it, we will learn many things along the way. I do not claim to have arrived, nor do I even feel that the destination is in sight. Uh, I, I'm growing still. I'm growing in knowledge. I pray. I, I'm trying to mature, and I've not displayed that very well this morning, but I am trying to mature. And uh, I, I hope that every day I go through things that will cause me to look back upon that day and to learn from it and perhaps not make mistakes in the next day or or not, uh, not uh, go down the same road if it's a, a wrong path. But certainly at the end of a year, we would be able to look back and learn some things that we have been through, some things that the Lord has taught us in a year. David here in Psalms 37 is riding toward the end of his life. We understand this because of the wording of verse number, uh, verse number 25. He said, I've been young and now I'm old. So David is speaking in the latter years of his life after he's had uh, the majority of his ministry is behind him, the majority of his reign is behind him, the majority of his days are behind him. He's seen blessings, he's seen valleys, he's seen good times, he's seen bad times. And David in the latter years makes this statement, I've been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. David seems to be taking a moment to look back over his lifetime and to talk about some of the things that he has learned. So as I began to ponder about the year of 
2019 and then turn my sights and look into the year of 2018, I wanted to think about some things that we perhaps as a church have learned, that we as a family have learned, and I believe you uh, and I as individuals have learned. Let me say this, we're told in Scripture to examine ourselves. In fact, the Word of God tells us in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know you not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you except you be reprobate. So the Lord told us examine ourselves and make sure we're saved. That's the first thing you need to do. Listen, if you're looking back over 2017 or you're looking back over every year that you've ever lived, there ought to be one mark on that, that, that lifetime. There ought to be one place that stands out in that lifetime and that is when you met Jesus Christ as your Savior. If it happened in 2017, praise the Lord. If it happened in a year prior to that, praise the Lord. But sometime as you look back and examine yourself, there ought to be a time and a place where you met the Lord Jesus and you received salvation in the free pardon of sin. Can I say this? If you have never experienced salvation by the grace of God, if you've never known Jesus Christ as your Savior, don't worry about 2018. Don't worry about what's already passed in 2017. You worry about one thing and that's this verse. Behold, today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off to another day. Don't put it off another moment. You say, I'll come when you get done preaching. Don't even put it off to the end of the message. If you cannot go back in your life examining yourself and know that you are in the faith, you ought to come right now to an altar of repentance and ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior. I'm telling you, that is a pressing matter. So we're told to examine ourselves and see if we be in the faith. We're told in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight, 28, but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Uh, here, the apostle Paul is talking about the Lord's Supper and he's talking about not taking of the Lord's Supper unworthily. In other words, you don't participate in the Lord's Supper if there's unconfessed sin in your life. He said, in fact, some have done this and it's brought them to an early grave is what he went on to say. So, so he said, examine yourself not only to make sure you're in the faith that you're saved. Hey, he said, examine yourself and make sure you're right with God. You ought to examine yourself. And I'll do the same thing with this. If you're not right with God, you've got unconfessed sin in your life. Your relationship's not what it was. Don't wait till the end of the message. Don't wait till new, the, the new year comes in. You just stop everything in your life right now and come get on your face before God and say, God, I'm sorry. I've messed things up. My fellowship is not right with you and I want to be right with God. That is a pressing matter. And so we're told to examine ourselves. David takes it a step farther. David asked the Lord to examine him. Amen. David, in fact, Psalms 26, I'll turn back there briefly. Psalms 26, verse number one said, Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins in my heart, for thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. Can I say one reason we're not asking the Lord to examine ourselves is we're not walking in the truth. If you're not walking in the truth, the last thing you want is the God of heaven who sees everything. Remember, behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, beholding the evil and the good. The last thing you want, if you're not walking in the truth of God's word, the last thing you want is an all-seeing eye examining your life. You might hide it from mom and dad. You might hide it from brother or sister. You might even hide it from your spouse, but you're not hiding anything from God. And so David here, he's living such a clean life. He's obeying the word of God. He says, Lord, I want you to examine me because you see everything. And if there's anything in me that shouldn't be there, Lord, deal with it and let me get it right. So the Bible tells us there is an examination that we ought to go through from time to time. I believe David here is examining examining his life back in Psalms 37. I believe he's looking back over some things that he's been through. He's now uh, toward the end of his life and he's examining and he's seeing what the Lord has done. So as we take a moment now and examine 2017, what is it that we have learned? Three things quickly. Number one, I believe we have learned time travels fast. Amen. I, I blinked my eyes and I realized it was just yesterday I was preaching about coming in 2017. 
Isn't that right? I don't know what it is as a parent that now Christmas comes four times a year, whereas a child it only came once a decade. That's what it seemed like to me, man. As a kid, it seemed like Christmas was never going to get here. And now it seems like it comes over and over every time we get over it. I told Mandy the other day, she was looking at all the Christmas decorations and boxes piled everywhere and getting ready uh, to, to go. We, we leave to go out of town tomorrow for just a couple of days. And uh, she's getting all that stuff ready. And the house was a wreck with boxes and everything. I said, honey, just leave it all up. Hey, man, we'll blink our eyes and have to put it back up anyway. Just leave everything in. We'll just work around all the Christmas decorations all year. And then when November comes, we won't have to fool with it again. Not that I have to fool with it a lot anyway. Mandy says, who's this we stuff? Hey. Uh, she does a lot of it and I, I do very little. But I, I was thinking about time. Time travels so fast. I was looking the other day and, and I'm at that place in my life where uh, I'm not old by any means, but I'm not near as young as I used to be. But I still feel young and I still I, I still look at the ministry like I'm a young preacher a lot of times. And I think, man, alive. Uh, it, it's so wonderful. I can't wait till I grow up and become a preacher. And then on the other hand, I turn around. I'm 41 years old. If I'm not going to grow up and become a preacher soon, <laughs> when in the world am I going to do it? I mean, my, I'm at that place in my life where I'm not old, but I'm not young. And I'm looking, I, I look around, I think, how in the world did I get to this place? We've got a daughter, she's 20 years old, y'all know that. And she's, she's getting ready to move uh, 1,200 miles away from home. And, and I look at it and go, how in the world a baby can't do that? To me, I look back and she's still that little child. The other day, I'll make this confession. I won't tell you everything, but uh, the other night I was struggling a little bit with the whole thing. And, and understand, we y'all know this, we've encouraged our kids to serve the Lord. I could not be happier and prouder uh, of our children serving the Lord. I, I'm tickled to death that Ashland is going to South Dakota. I am. I'm excited about him. Uh, but I am going to be honest with you. There is a cloud hanging over my life right now. It's just hanging there and I can't get out from under it. No matter what I do, there's perks of sun that come through every now and then. But for the most part, there's just a cloud. The other night, Brother Ken, I was struggling a little bit with everything that's going on. And I figured, hey, I know what I'll do. Let's go get her scrapbook. And let's relive her life. That's smart when you're feeling down. <laughs> I opened her scrapbook and I started going through some of the pictures when she was a baby and, and, and all the little, little milestones that she met as a child as she was growing. And, and I looked and I sat there in the living room chair and thought, how did we get to this place? There's no way these pictures took place 20 years ago. But guess what? If there's anything 2017 has showed me again, time travels fast. David made reference to time traveling fast in Psalms 39 5. David said, Behold, thou hast made my days as a handbreadth. Mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Other psalmists said this, Psalms 89 47, Remember how short my time is. Wherefore hast thou made all men in vain? Psalms 90, verse number 5, Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are asleep. Uh, they are as a sleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger and by thy wrath we are troubled. Psalms 102 verse number 3. For my days are consumed like smoke and my bones are burned as an hearth. In the New Testament James said, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and yet vanisheth away. I'm telling you one thing we've learned again this year. Time is fast. Man, it's moving. I want to encourage you who spend a lot at Christmas time. Get busy. It's coming again. Amen. I want to encourage you who have young children. Buy a car now. They'll be in it tomorrow. Say so my kids are just toddling around. Buy them a car. I'm telling you, it will be tomorrow and they will need it. Time flies. It is so fast. 
When we look at, when we look at the little life, uh, uh, Brother Troy's granddaughter Heather made reference to it the other day in the funeral. It's that dash between the dates. I preached about it. Other preachers have preached about it. That, 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 that dash between the day you're born and the day that you die. It is just a little fragment of, of all of time, but it, it's what we consist of. That's our life, that little bitty dash. And when you look on a scale and a timeline, your time here is so limited and so small, it is barely even a speck on the timeline of history. We've learned this year time travels fast. Second thing we've learned this year, I believe David knew that. Second thing we've learned is that trials at times are furious. Sometimes trials are tough. Somebody told me the other day, growing old's not for sissies. Amen. And I, and I don't make reference to, to me being old. I, I don't, because I know what happens. Some, somebody will come out, somebody in their 50s will come out and look at me in my 40s and say, you just wait. And then somebody in their 60s will pass them and tap them on the shoulder and say, you just wait. And somebody in their 70s will come by and tap them on the shoulder and say, you ain't seen nothing yet. And it just keeps on going and going. So I'm not making reference to me being old in any means. But, but I'm just saying I've talked with people who uh, they're, they're toward the end of their life and they're looking back and said, preacher, I don't even know how we got here. It, it, it is so fast. And he said, this time of my life has been very difficult. You're raising children and, and you're new to raising children, you found out the, 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 the married life without children is a lot less trying than the married life with children. Amen. If you've got small children, what you're going to find out is married life with small children is not nearly as trying as married life with older children. And I don't have grown children. I've got one that's just about out of the house. We know that. And, and, and I asked somebody one day, I said, when do you stop worrying about them? They said, I don't know. They're, all their kids were grown and have families of their own. I said, when do you stop worrying about your kids? They said, I don't know. I've not stopped yet. And they said, when you, you, you think teenage years are rough, you think older kids are rough, wait till they get out of the house and they got families of their own and they're making decisions and you're looking at the decisions they're making and there's nothing you can do about it. And, and you see the error or you see them going down the wrong road and you can't change it. So that's when trials really start coming. Then you get into the years where kids are taking care of you. It's a very trying time. Amen. Very trying time. I'm just saying in this life, and one thing we've learned in 2017, trials sometimes are furious. There's been sicknesses this past year, and I won't reference them all, but we know them, and, and, and there's been serious illnesses. And I'll be honest with you, it's not been easy for people. It's not been easy. There's been losses. You know, we've, we've lost Granny and Pa within the last few months. That's mama's mom and dad. I don't know what that is to lose a parent. One day, if time travels on, I'm sure I'll find out. I, I hope that day's a long. To be honest with you, if y'all could just live to be about 130 or so, that'd be a blessing. And then I'll be 100 and my kids will be grown and we'll just all be raptured out together. That'd be a real blessing. I'd appreciate it if y'all could make a note of that. Maybe write that down somewhere as a request. My mom's face losing both of her parents. Miss Marlene went home to be with the Lord. What I'm telling you is this year we've experienced some trials that are furious. I mean, they've not been easy. Life is not easy on people. And you say, well, I'm a Christian. That means nothing touches me. You didn't read your Bible because you didn't get that out of the Word of God. You see, the Christian life is not a life without trouble. It's not a life without trials. It is a life with an ever-present strong hand in the midst of troubles and trials. The Christian life does not mean you're exempt from the valley. It just means that when you get to the valley, there's a rose there. It does not mean that you'll never go into the fire. It just means when you get to the fire, there'll be a fourth man there. The Christian life simply means he will never leave you nor forsake you. And when times are hard and times are furious, you can rest on this fact. There are the everlasting arms of the Lord that will uphold you in great power and great strength. We've learned that in 2017. Trials at times are furious. Time is 
fast. But let me say this lastly, and this is where it gets good. If there's one thing we've learned 2017, I think we could sum it up like this. The Lord has been tried and found faithful. I don't know if you've tested him any this year, but I have. I've tested him a few times this year not to see if he was. Listen, I don't shrink. Can I say this? I hunt rarely. Not nearly as much as I'd like to, but I do hunt some. Years ago, we bought a tree lounge tree stand. And I, I still use it from time to time. And one of the reasons we bought that is I was about 320 pounds when we bought it. And they were rated to hold how many ever pounds? Basically an elephant. Since I was close to that size, thought that'd be the stand for me. And uh, we bought that stand. You know what it said? It, it had rated on the, on the box. It told what it was weighted. And I was under that. So when I put the stand on the tree, I did not question its ability. I knew it would live up to what it said. I mean, this thing's been tested over and over and over and over. But guess what? Until I got in it, I, didn't, I couldn't say for myself. I just had to take their word for it. Can I say this? I've never doubted the ability of God. He's God. The name pretty well sums it up. I've never doubted his love. I've never doubted his care. I've never doubted his power. And I've never doubted his strength. But there have been circumstances that have put me in a place where I had to depend upon it. There have been circumstances that have come into our life that have put me in a place where I had to depend on the strength that I'd heard about and the power that I'd read about. I had to depend upon the love that I had heard preached so many times. And guess what I found out when I tried him? Uh, when I found out he, had, he was true just as he had stated he was. He was just as strong as he said he was. He loved me just as much as they told me he did. He cared for me just as much as he said he would. But as my circumstances put me there, so now I don't, I don't just read the box, or can I say just read the book and tell people he's faithful, Brother Jamie. I can take him to circumstances in my life where I tell him he's faithful. The Lord in this year has been tried and found faithful. The Lord even invited us many times to try him. Don't think for a moment you're disservicing or not trusting God by putting him on trial in your life. What that simply means is it's, it's not whether or not you believe him. It just may be you've never had an opportunity for him to exercise that power in your life. And now you're giving him that opportunity. Job, Job did not know firsthand all that God could do in a broken life. Until Job tried him and found him faithful. David said in our text here, he said, he, he said this, verse number 24, Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his right hand. David is a man that's known great blessings. He's known the blessings of a kingdom. He's known the blessings of the touch of God on his life. He's also known great sin in his life and great problems in his life. He's, he's known the blessings of won battles and he's known the, the sadness of losing a child. And David said, it's the Lord that upholds me in this time. So I look back over 2017, I look back over the, the many years. I'm getting ready to celebrate 13 years as pastor here at the church. That means that uh, this coming year, this, I guess the first Sunday in January, I will have been officially at the church for 23 years now as a part of this church. And I look back over what the Lord's done in 23 years here of my association with the church and I... I have to say there have been many times that we put him to the test. Brother Troy, every time he's been found faithful. You see, you don't always find out who your friends are until you're put in the circumstances where you really need that friend. When you're put in a circumstance when you need the friend that sticketh closer than a brother, it sure is good to find out he is the friend that stick of closer than a brother. As we stand to our feet, every head bowed and every eye closed, Ashland's going to come to the piano.
Maybe this year you've learned some things. As I said earlier, if you've never been saved, you ought to examine yourself this morning. If you're not in the faith, if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, today is the day of salvation. If you're here and you examine yourself and you're found you're not right with God, then you ought to get right with God right now, this very moment. And it may be this year has shown you some things and you've learned quite a few things this year. And I will just come thank the Lord. And I say this, I never enjoyed school. But now that I'm an adult, I thank the Lord for the education that I have. You may not enjoy the experiences, but you ought to come thank the Lord that He's brought you through them to teach you who He is, how faithful He is, how much He loves you and cares for you. The altars are open, many have come. Why don't you just mind the Lord, be sensitive, come talk with Him for a little while.